Welcome to Spicy Toast Gaming and our Portal King Guide for Path of Champions. If you enjoy the video, like and subscribe, and let's get into it. First, we're going to start with a brief overview of the champion, discussing their general playstyle so you have a better understanding of the champion and if you want to invest your time and resources into them. First up, we have Poros. The main focus of the deck and the most unique element of this deck. If you enjoy little adorable balls of fluff, this might be the deck for you. Next up, we have Strong Scaling. The entire purpose of this deck and star powers is to build a massive army of beefy poros and use them to destroy your enemies. Up next, we have Swarm Playstyle. You'll often have a full board of cheap units, and when any of them gets removed, you can easily replace them. Next up, we have Keyword Stacking. As a core part of your scaling, you'll be stacking unique keywords across all of your units. Last up, we have Not Champion Reliant. While the Poro King is a strong card, you will often win games without needing to play him. He often feels more like a solid backup plan that can help you close out some games, but is not necessary for every win. Alright, that is it for the overview. Let's hop in game to better explain some of the points we touched on here. In game now, you see we have the Poro King at level 23 with 3 stars. We have beaten the hardest content in the game, that being Aurelian Soul, many times with him. So the Poro King is a 5 cost Poro and is 4-4. Four, four. Also important to note, this is a Runeterra champion, not a Freljord champion. So if you're looking for a new Freljord champion, he will not fit for that. His effect is each round, the first time you summon another Poro, create a Poro Snacks in hand and then his level up is you've summoned six other new Poros. Once he levels up, he goes to a 5-5, and now each round, the first time you summon another Poro, create a random special snack in hand. His champion spell is the Poro King's Call, a three cost burst. Draw two different Poro followers and grant them 1-1. One, one. Now important to note, this says draw two, not create two. A lot of the other cards you have are creating new Poros. This is drawing them. So you're going to have a better understanding of what you're going to be getting since you'll know what poros you have in your deck and this can give you some synergy with the powers like quick draw when you draw a card it costs one less but the one issue is that if you've drawn all your poros which can happen in your first game or two essentially this isn't going to do anything so just be sure to know that this is a draw to not creating more poros now the poro snack you see right here so three cost burst grant allied poros everywhere one one this is what he is going to be creating when he's not leveled up and you play another Poro. Now this also is going to get items on it from your starting deck, but we'll touch on that later. And then these four are the special snack that he is going to create once he's leveled up. As you see, they are two costs, so they cost one less than the Poro snack, but they still have that same effect. They all have Grant Allied Poros everywhere, 1-1. One, one. So essentially it's just a better Poro snack, but then it also has an additional effect. So the Espresso Snack, give two poor allies challenge for this round. Frosted Snack, Frostbite an enemy with three or less health. Colorful Snack, grant allied champions everywhere one one and a random keyword. And then the Pepper Snack, give poor allies impact this round. This can really help you out, giving you a good amount of extra damage when you attack. All right, let's go take a look at his star powers. So up first we have Stronger Together, round start. If allies have four or more unique keywords, Grant allies 2-2. Two, two. Now if you just have the one star version of this, it's the exact same effect, except that it is 1-1 one, one instead of 2-2. Two, two. And for the two star, we have for the king, plus one starting mana, round end, if an ally died this round, grant your weakest ally 1-1 one, one, and a random keyword that allies don't have. Important to note, this is round end, and the other keyword is round start. So if you have a unit die, at the end of the round, you'll be getting a unique keyword, that way, if you have four or more unique keywords at round start, this one will trigger, granting all your allies 2-2. Two, two. Really nice how they have this structured. Alright, let's go take a look at his starting deck. So up first we have the Lonely Poro, so one cost Poro, with the Studded Leather making it 2-2. Two, two. When I'm summoned, create another random one cost Poro. Again, create, not draw, so this is just a making another random one cost Poro. Great card to have, and a great way to just generate more Poro cards. Next we have the Pouty Poro, so again, one cost with Philosopher's Stone, so I'm summoned to draw one. 
and then empower three, overwhelm, regen, and tough. So if you can buff this card up to three power, he's going to get those three keywords. This is a great way to start triggering your star powers because you need four unique keywords and this is giving you three right away. Next up we have Poro Stories. So two cost burst, create three random one cost Poros in hand. Again, this is a create, not a draw and also has Poro Snacks to summon a random one cost Poro. Great way to get more Poro cards and then also get a free Poro on the board. Up next we have the Professor Von Yip. So this is normally a four cost. When it's a four cost, you often won't be able to play it because it's too slow. When this goes down to a two cost though, with that Nomad's Medallion, it is suddenly very strong. You get this upgrade at level 18. So it's a two three, but when you summon a one cost ally, grant it two two. So if you draw this at the start of the game, it's usually a good idea to put this on the board immediately and then start playing all your Poros. One good combo you can do to try to get your star powers off as soon as possible is to get the Professor on the board and then play your Pouty Poro. When you play him, he'll immediately get buffed up to a 3-3, getting that Overwhelm regen and tough, so you're almost there to completing your star powers and starting your scaling. Next up we have the Chemtech Catamobile. So this has Quick Attack and Overwhelm, again, two keywords, and with this having Quick Attack, this is a keyword that the Pouty Poro doesn't have. So sometimes you're just wanting to play this for those keywords so you can start your scaling. But it starts out as a 0-4, and then has the effect of I have one power for each one cost ally you've summoned this game. Now, this card doesn't need to be on the board for this scaling to happen. So you can just keep playing one cost cards, and this unit will keep getting buffed up, and then you can play this later in the game. He's going to have all that power from all the one cost you've played. So a very solid card, especially the fact that it can scale while in your hand or deck. Next up we have Poro Nip. Now this is a very strong removal card. So it starts out as a four cost, but goes down to a three cost with that mana potion. It's fast. Allied Poros strike an enemy. So you play this card, you target an enemy, and then every single Poro you have will go through striking that enemy. This is probably one of the strongest removal spells in the game because normally you're going to have a board full of Poros and normally they're all going to be fairly powerful. So this is a great way to take out even the toughest targets. Next up you see we have Poro Snacks, so 3 cost burst, we've already been over this, but it's nice to see that this is in your starting deck. It gets this Hextech Fabricator, so now not only is it buffing your Poros, it's also giving your strongest ally, which is normally a Poro, a random rare item. I also believe from the champion level ups this gets a health potion on it, so it also gives you great sustain. And the fact that you can generate these from your Poro King is very strong. Sometimes you might not even want to level up your Poro King, so you can just stay with the Poro snacks and keep getting these generated every round instead of going to the special snacks that don't have that health potion and fabricator. So for 5 costs you see we have the Poro King, and then for the 6 costs we have Heart of the Fluffet. So 6 costs 6-6 six, six with that Phage. Play, combine your Poro followers, so it's not going to grab your Poro King, but all other Poros, into a Fluffed of Poros, and grant it their stats and positive keywords. So you play this card, it sucks up all your Poros other than the Poro King, it becomes this Fluffed of Poros, having all the stats and keywords of all your Poros combined. You generally want to use this in two different ways, either play this to end the game, so you're going to get a massive unit that has potentially elusive or lifesteal or just a way you're going to be finishing off the match that round. Or you want to play this to free up some space on your board so you can keep playing other Poros. So if your board is pretty much full, but you have more Poros you want to be playing, you can play this, suck up a group of Poros, and then start playing more Poros. Outside of those two cases, you normally don't want to be playing this though, since you want to be having a pretty full board that keeps getting buffed up more and more. So this can be a strong card, but it is quite situational. Don't just immediately play this every time you see it in your hand, because quite often you can play this and then you don't have enough blockers and the enemy will just take out this one card and then all your Poros are gone, or they'll be able to like challenge it to the side and still attack and do a lot of damage. So this can be a strong card, but it's definitely situational. All right, let's go take a look at the champion levels and see what other upgrades we're going to be getting. So here, level 24, you see Poro Snacks also gets Health Potion, so heals your Nexus equal to my cost. This is going to really help you gain a lot of sustain, making you one of the best sustaining decks in the game. Down here, you see Professor Von Yip gets Chain Vest, 
that's both great for giving you some defenses, but also it's another keyword that you don't have to worry about grabbing. And then that is it as far as items for your starting deck. I think it's a pretty solid deck, well put together. Also the fact that this is a card that they made just for this deck is pretty awesome. And I think it really has everything you need. Now it definitely can be a little slow when you first start out, but once you get some of these upgrades going, like getting Professor Von Yip down to a two cost, Poro Stories with that Poro snack on it to summon a free Poro, with these couple upgrades the deck really starts coming online and gets quite powerful. Taking a look at relics now, the best relic is probably Chemtech Duplicator. So when you play a spell, if you have six mana gems, copy it with the same targets. So the Poor King is a five cost, so normally you play him. Then the next round, you have your Duplicator online, and then he's doubling all of your Poro snacks that you're playing, further buffing up all your units to a pretty crazy degree. I also like pairing that with the Troll King's Crown, allies have Overwhelm. That way you play the Poro King, if your units don't all have Overwhelm, you can then attack and deal massive damage to the enemy Nexus. Great way for finishing off the game. As far as common relics, when you're first starting the game, I would probably use the Star Child Staff, Game Start Healer Nexus 3. It's great to have a little bit of extra sustain. Chameleon's Necklace, Game Start Create 2 copies of me in your deck. That's also strong if you want to be sure you can actually play the Poro King consistently. And then Lost Chapter is also a great addition to refill your spell mana when you play him, so that you can play a Poro Snacks the same round that you play the Poro King. Those are the main common relics I would uh, suggest using. For some more rare relics, the Archangel Staff, Round Star to refill your spell mana. This can be quite good. I don't think it's as good as the other two, but it would be a solid addition for your third rare slot, making sure you always have the mana to play some of your powerful spells. Crown Guard Inheritance when I level up Rally. So the Poor King, quite often, you're ending the game before you level up and your level up is debatably making you weaker since you're losing all the items on your Poro Snacks. So this hasn't really been a priority to me, even though it's one of the strongest relics in the game. Corrupted Star Fragment, support, kill my supported ally and grant me its stats and keywords. While it is pretty terrible to be consuming all of the Poros you're generating, it could really buff up your Poro King and open up your board so you have more space to play more Poros. Quite often you have an issue where you have a full board and you have a bunch of Poros in your hand but you just don't want to play them because you don't want to be overriding your other units. So this could help fix that issue. If you are wanting to play Corrupted Star Fragment, I would pair it with the Scourge of Stash, Plunder, I cost two less, trying to get your Poro King out on the board a little bit earlier so we can start attacking, consuming your other Poros and getting stronger and stronger. The Grand General's Counter Plan can also be decent for the Poro King. If you remember, that is his Council's Call. So you're drawing two different Poros and granting them 1-1. One, one. Great way to make sure you're always getting more Poros if you are having issues running out of units to play. To generate these Poro snacks, he does have to keep playing Poros. So you can run into an issue where you just don't have any left in your hand to play to generate those free snacks. Next up we have the Berserker's Buckle. When I survive damage, grant me 2-2. Two, two. So the Poro King can be a pretty tanky card, but if you're wanting to focus on him scaling up more, this can be a great way to do that. Also, the Bounty Hunter's Noun, generally the best stat relic in the game, if again you're trying to focus on the Poro King himself. But if you're wanting to go for a more passive build and not really worry about your Poro King, the Cardmaster's Gambit is a pretty good call. 1-1, one, one, and when you win the encounter without taking any Nexus damage, earn 1 reroll. The Poro King is a deck that does rely on getting some powers that synergize with what you're trying to do. So making sure you have enough rerolls to get the right powers could be quite beneficial. The Blade Rack, allies have Challenger, very similar to giving all of your units Overwhelm. This can be another great way to finish off the game. Make sure your units are all trading appropriately and that they're able to each pick what unit is going to be blocking them. I personally like the Overwhelm better, but if you prefer giving your units Challenger, this is another good alternative. And then the last one I want to talk about is the Green Glade Shade Leaf Support, Grant My Supported Ally Elusive. Again, if you're going with this, you probably want to pair it with the Scourge of Stash to try to get him on the board earlier. But when you attack, you can support your units and start giving them all elusive. Great to get more keywords on the board and then getting an elusive army. This can work out quite well for you. All right, that's it for the in-game portion. Let's go take a look at what powers you might want to get with him, as well as support champions some tips and tricks, and his overall ranking for both tier list and his region ranking. All right, so taking a look at powers now, here on the left we have Gearing Up, Game Start, Summon Two Armed Gearheads. 
Now those armed gearheads have quick attack and augment, so great for getting two of your keywords out of the way at the very beginning, and it can really help you start your scaling. Also, you're playing a decent amount of created cards, so they'll normally be scaling up decently well. You'll be replacing them later with Poros, but it's great to just have them at game start. Next up, we have Little Buddies. Round starts summon a random one-cost Poro. This is obviously amazing for you. Now, this is a epic power, so you're not going to see it too often, but when you do, you definitely want to grab it, as this will just really help you out, get more keywords, get more Poros, and it's pretty much the best power for you to get. We have Quick Draw. Cards you draw cost one less this round. Now, there's some things to be aware of with this power. So, one... Your champion spell for the Poro King, the Council's Call, it draws two Poros, so that pairs quite well with this quick draw power. But if you have a Professor Von Yip, he buffs up your one cost allies. If you're playing Poros for a zero cost, he then won't buff them up, so just be aware of that. Take a look at the next group of powers, Welcome Gifts when you summon an ally, grant it a random keyword. Again, great for trying to get your scaling off. And really, if you see any keyword power in the game, you probably want to grab it. So the one that gives you Fury or the one that gives you Lurk, any of those will be very strong for you. But Welcome Gifts is generally the best version of that. Next up, we have Crush. Allies have Overwhelm. Now again, similar to Welcome Gifts, this is a keyword. You're normally going to be getting this keyword anyways, though, from your Pouty Poro. So it's not helping your scaling as much. It's more just helping you be able to end the game by dealing the maximum amount of damage with all of your units, because they will generally get quite big and scary. But if you don't have Overwhelm, normally you'll just get blocked out and the game will go on much longer. Domination, Round Start Rally here on the right, just helping you attack every single round, trying to end the game as soon as possible. Then next up we have Wild Inspiration, your created cards cost one less. Now you're creating a lot of Poros and also a decent amount of spells. So this can really help you out, but again, remember, if you're playing with Professor Von Yip, he can't buff up your Poros if you're playing them for a zero cost. So while it's generally a good card, if you're focusing on playing your Professor, this can actually work against you. Spell Slinger, your spells cost one less, you're making a lot of spells, this really helps you just reduce down their cost, and then Sorcery, Round Start, Refill your spell mana. Very similar to Spell Slinger, you have a lot of spells you're playing, you want to be sure you have the mana to play them every round. That was it for powers, now taking a look at support champions. Up first we have keywords. Any champions that are going to be able to give you more keywords will definitely help you out. Then next up we have Poros. Any other champions that can help you generate more Poros, definitely going to be ones to look out for. And then last up we have Empower. While your focus is buffing up your Poros, you are still buffing up your entire board. So if there's any units that have the Empower mechanic, you can normally get them to the place where they can start triggering those. So first up for support champions, we have Kai'Sa. Kai'Sa also really cares about keyword stacking, so they pair quite well together. We also have Victor, again, all focused on getting more and more keywords. Then we have Braum. He's able to generate Mighty Poros, which can be a good pairing for you since those Mighty Poros will start scaling out of control. And then last up, we have Kale. Kale's a lot of empowered mechanics. And then some of her support cards also have a decent amount of keywords on them, which can help get your scaling off even more. So while this isn't a exhaustive list of all the support champions, these are some you might want to keep an eye out for, and the reasons why you want to be looking out for them. Now a new addition to our guides, we're adding what cards you might want to be looking out for in your different shops. Now again, this is not going to be a exhaustive list, but just some things to consider when you're getting rewards or looking through your shops. So first on the left, we have the Dragon Prince Grismo, or Grinzo. So attune, and then each round, the first time you summon a one cost ally, refill one spell mana. That can be decent to put on your board and then just be generating more, more spell mana every round. Really any cards you see that have benefits with one cost allies, something to look out for. Next up, we have Poro Sled. Attack, summon a random one cost Poro. Again, great for more Poro generation. Really, anytime you see Poro on a card, you want to take a closer look at it and see if it can work for you. Next up, we have Inspiring Light. So it's a solid, cheap card, grant allies 1-1. One, one. Good effect, but the main thing we're looking for is Poro Snack. Summon a random one cost Poro. If there's any spells you see that have this on it, you want to consider getting them. Now, you don't want to get them in every situation, but especially if it's a cheap spell, even if the spell doesn't help you at all, if it's like a two, one cost, or a zero cost spell that has Poros Snacks on it, there's a good chance you want to get it, and you're using it more just for summoning that random one cost Poro. 
As you see, this is a common item, so a lot of things are going to be having this on there, and that's a great one to keep an eye out for. Next up, we have the Aurora Porealis. Normally, this is a six cost burst. Create two random Poros and two Poro Snacks in hand. Great card to see. I got lucky here and got one that had it going down to a four cost. Normally a card to keep an eye out for, and normally one you want to be grabbing, especially if it has some good items on it. And then last up, we have Warden of the Tribe. So it's a nine cost. So normally you won't be wanting to grab this, but especially if you get something like Poro Fluff on it, where it can go down to a one cost, or here I got Double Time Watch. It is pretty expensive, but it has that play effect of when I'm summoned, grant allies 1-1 one, one for each different subtype you've summoned this game, which can be nice just for buffing up pretty much all of your units. Again, it is fairly expensive, so not one that you're going to be wanting to go crazy with trying to get, but if you see it and if it's cheap, it's a good one to consider. All right, next up, we have some tips and tricks, or well, just one mainly for this champion. If you take a look at the powers menu and you scroll down to the bottom, for your main star power, round star, if allies have four unique keywords, grant allies 2-2. Two, two. An easy way to keep track of that and just to make sure you're hitting that mark, there's a nice handy counter that'll tell you how many unique keywords you have. So here in the photo, you can see we have seven out of four. Great way to always check to see how close you are to getting that star power scaling, as that really is your main win condition. All right, last up, just in summary, let's start off with his ranking. So I would say before you hit level 20, so when you're first starting him out, he's gonna be generally a B tier champion. Now post level 20, this is not max level. I don't have him at level 30 yet, so I'm not gonna give him a max rating. But once you hit level 20 and then thereafter, he moves up to a A tier champion. By this point, you're getting a lot of your upgrades rolling. You're getting your champion draw at the start of the game. He definitely gets a lot stronger. If we take a look down below for his regional ranking. Now, unfortunately, he's in the Runeterra region where there's a large amount of champions. So he is just kind of in the middle of the pack. He's not the best, but he's also not the worst. He's a solid champion to pick up, but if you're looking for one of the best Terra champions to complete different quests with, probably want to look somewhere else. The main reasons to pick up the deck, it's Poros, and you just have absolutely crazy scaling. That is the main draws of this deck and why you want to be picking it up. Why you might want to avoid it, it can have a bit of a slow start, and then quite often, especially at lower levels, it can be power reliant, as in getting the right powers throughout the match, which if you just have bad luck, can give you a pretty bad run. In general though, he's a very solid champion and a great addition to the game. All right, that's it for our Poro King guide. If you enjoyed it, definitely like and subscribe, and I hope you all have a great day.